gals, say hello to Ahmed Alazir. According to our good friends at CIA and NSA, he's the man of the hour. Number one with a bullet. Nice to be wanted. And we want him. Bad. So what's this thug done that he's so popular all of a sudden? You played college hoops, right? If I hadn't torn my ACL, you know I'd be throwing dunks down on T-Mac and Kobe on a nightly basis. Meanwhile, back in reality. So you had guys showing up at your door back in high school wanting to sell you and going to their university, right? Yeah, there were a few. That's what Ahmed does. Sort of. He's Al-Qaeda's go-to guy for convincing wannabe suicide bombers in this country to sign up for their terrorist team. Room, board, tuition, and early death benefits. Nice. Ahmed and several of his buddies have set up shop right in our backyard in Virginia. Now, thanks to Sue and one of her informants, we got a line on one of them. Rashad Kateb. He's one of Ahmed's recruits. She has an Arab source. Malik Bassam. His mother owns a restaurant that Sue and I go to sometimes. And Malik goes to the same mosque as Rashad Kateb. Rashad tried to recruit Malik and the others at the mosque. Malik came to us to report it. How sure are we that we can trust this informant? We're sure. So we now know that Rashad Kateb and Ahmed Alazir share a house. We are going in there with SWAT, and we're going to put an end to this recruiting effort. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I always love going through that door with little more than my HT and some chit-chat from the neighborhood eatery to back me up. Sam 33, report. Sam 33, room clear. Doorway! What is it? Shots fired. Target! Subject headed for the back room! We're under fire! Subject's armed and on the move! I got a subject down. It's a shock attempt. The house is not clear. We have an operator down. We need to extract an operator. One of ours is hit. Identify. Operator is Sam 33. Get the medics in here. It's Miles. If I live to be a hundred and never see the seven wonders, that'll be all right. Drops from nowhere I will be just fine Cause nothing changes Who I am I am Rosemary's granddaughter The spinning image of my father And when the day is done My mama's still my biggest fan Sometimes I'm fluent and I'm blind Okay, found the bullet. You're a lucky man, Agent Leland. Took that round right in the trauma plate of your vest. Another inch to the left. Well, we're not having this discussion. Oh, that's not luck, Doc. It's training. Line it up. Took all that little bush range I had. Front and center, right, Miles? Yeah, nothing to it. Oh, easy there, cowboy. He's right. That's still a major blow you absorbed. I'm gonna need to do some tests, get some x-rays. Nonsense, I'm fine. Hey, you try getting up out of that chair again, I'll finish you off myself. So how'd it feel? Life flash before your eyes? 
No, I knew I wasn't dead when I looked up and saw your homely faces. I figured this couldn't possibly be heaven. That's more like it. <laughs> so, I overheard someone say that one of them was wired up. Yeah, he was wearing a bomb. Oh, shoot. Looks like he tried to detonate it, but it didn't go off. Well, isn't that a joyful thought? And let me guess, their fearless leader, Ahmed Al-Azir, wasn't one of the men inside. No. Don't you just love those saber-rattling, gutless Osama types? To keep telling how wonderful it is to be a martyr as long as it's not them doing the martyring. Miles? I just wanted to tell you I'm glad you're okay. Thank you. I'd like to get him in for observation. Let's go. No, look. Yeah, we're out of here. Look, just do what you need to do and let me get out of here. I have unfinished business, and they are out there recruiting new fanatics as we speak. We'll take care of that. Get some rest. ID on the dead bodies. Rashad Kateb, 33 years old. Yemeni passport, the man who tried to recruit Susan Formant, and Ali Bakshir, Saudi Arabia, age unknown. We've got an APB working on Ahmed Al-Azir. So, what happened in there? We did everything by the numbers. They were waiting for us. If this was an ambush, it tells us two things. The obvious one is we got a leak. The other is that these guys are no longer running and hiding when we come knocking. So if they were tipped off, who did it? Well, it was a short list of candidates. There was us and Susan Foreman. I don't believe he would do that. Not intentionally, anyway. Have you been in contact with him since it happened? I've tried to reach him. He hasn't returned my calls. He's an informant, Thomas. He's unreliable by definition. And he obviously had advanced knowledge. We'll find him and check it out. Well, look who's back. Hey! Wow. Hey! Aren't you supposed to be being checked out? Already done it. Medical and psych. Doctors say I'm good to go. He gets shot and he goes sane on us. Go figure. How do you feel, man? It's oh, sore. I've got the mother of all bruises. Care to see? No. Oh. <laughs> well, I know you're all just kidding. No, we're not. <laughs> you know, there are things that uh, happen in your life that, uh, well, like getting shot in the chest, that have a way of changing your outlook. I guess what I'm really saying is that I'm going to be making an effort to be uh, a little kinder, a little gentler, and uh, a lot less sarcastic with my cutting wit. Malik has not been home for two days. He's a very good son. This is not like him. The last time you saw him, notice anything unusual? Any unusual phone calls, meetings with strangers, anything like that? No, no. I'm very worried for my son. Please, you find him. You, you bring him back home, yes? We'll do our best. Okay, good. Thank you. Are you locked? She hasn't seen him since before the raid. Or so she says. Mothers will often do whatever it takes to protect their sons. Malik feels strongly there is no place for terrorism in his religion. He's given us solid information and never asked for a dime. I don't believe that he set us up. I think we need to face the reality that he may have. Look, the fact that he's not calling you back, it, it's tough to get around. Unless he's been found out. Sue has a point. He could be dead. Or maybe he's hiding out because someone threatened him. Or threaten his mother? Or oh, he could just be playing us. I think we need to check out the mosque he belongs to. Yo, yo, can we need it that way, alright? That bullet must have ricocheted off his vest and given him a little knock to the noggin. You have far to go? These days, the opportunity to demonstrate that we are peaceful, law-abiding members of the community is welcome. What can I do to help? We're looking for Malik Bazan. Have you heard from him in the last few days? Malik hasn't been around lately. 
It is a bit surprising. He is normally very diligent in the time he spends here. What about this man? You seen him? I'm familiar with him. His name is Ahmed. He attended prayer services here briefly. Briefly? He was a troublemaker. In what way? His views are very radical, not like ours. We asked him to leave. Not before uh, he managed to recruit Rashad Kateb to his cause. I blame myself for not recognizing sooner that his influence was so poisonous. I never for a minute thought that a good man like Rashad would be so susceptible. Is there anyone here that might be able to help us locate Ahmed? I'm afraid not. As I told you, his time here was brief. Well, if you hear anything from Ahmed or Malik, could you please call us at this number? Certainly. Do you think he's telling the truth? Good question. There's not knowing anything about this, and then there's not wanting to know. Oh, I'm getting paged. This my leg. Jack Hudson, he works with me. I tried to call you yesterday. Why didn't you return? I couldn't. I heard what happened. I just came here to tell you that I had nothing to do with it. They knew we were coming. How? Oh. There's no way I would know that. I was simply someone they were trying to recruit. Rashad Kadeb told me only that there was change in the wind. I had no idea what he meant by this. He was very mysterious about it. And now he's dead. He was planning to take some of us with him. Do you think they suspect that you're the one who tipped us off? No one knows I talked to you. No one. If they know it came from someone in your world, not mine. Ackman got away. Do you have any idea where to find him? No. You believe me when I tell you. I don't know how word of your raid got to them. But it didn't come from me. I believe you. You won't be hearing from me anymore. Malik, your mother is very worried about you. Be careful. Okay, we're clear. I believe him. So do I. I don't think he's that good of an actor. So where'd the leak come from? Bottom line, we're still looking for our leak. Anybody else thinking what I'm thinking? Hope not. One person who thinks like you is enough for any office. What are you thinking? My money's on the Senate subcommittee on intelligence. Sanders know about a day-to-day -day thing, like one of our ways? If they ask, they do, and we have no choice but to tell them. Everything? Everything. Time, place, target. What color socks we're going to wear if they decide they want to know. Classified information that we wouldn't share with a five-star general. Available on demand to politicians and their staff who don't even have security clearances. Did they know about this, Ray? I checked. It was in the full ops brief Garrett had to send up at the beginning of the week. It got included at the last minute. Well, that may explain a couple things. Well, that's got to be it. You know, these leaks are... I almost said these leaks are going to be the death of me, and then I just realized they almost were. You you really think it's possible that Sanders' office gave information to Al-Qaeda? Well, not directly, and probably not on purpose. But if they leaked it to anyone, then who knows how it got there. That's why it's supposed to be classified. 
You know, once it gets out, we can't keep track of it. This has got to stop. You're right, it does. So let's find out who did it and stop them. How? Well, they like information. Let's give them a little more. Plant a couple of juicy tidbits. See who bites. We call it shooting die. We give each senator's office a slightly different story. A specific piece of information made up especially for them. Key detail here or there. And when one of those little details shows up in the newspaper or we hear it on the street, we know which office is leaking. I say we start doing a little creative plumbing. Capital idea. Or should I say, capital idea. <laughs> capital with an O. A little Washington humor. That went right over my head. I'm sorry I'm late, but uh, they were just making up a fresh batch of these babies. And let me tell you, it was worth the wait. I thought you quit eating donuts. Oh, I did. Bad for my cholesterol. Mm. So who wants one? Hey, come on, you only live once, people. You could get shot tomorrow. Or well, my case yesterday. My cholesterol's fine. Close mine. <laughs> Good philosophy. I have cream felt. Works for me. That call was DCPD. Your informant, Malik Bassam, was found dead of a gunshot wound. Found my son. Malik was killed this morning. I'm so sorry, Mrs. Bethan. No. He did what I asked him to do, and it cost him his life. Our job now is to catch the man who did it. That's what I intend to do, and to find out how they knew. For all those interested, we've put out the tidbits of false information to the various senators' offices. They were placed in updates, 99% of which are true, all with a different piece of misinformation. Now we wait to see whose false tidbit becomes public. The brass upstairs wants everyone here to take polygraph tests. <sighs> right. I called Al-Qaeda just before we entered the house to let them know which door I'd be at so they'd be sure to have a good shot at me. It's to prove that the leak didn't come from here. Now they are backing us on the Senate probe. I'm not going to complain. In the meantime, we have no new information on Ahmed El-Azir. We're not even sure if he's still in the country. We no haven't seen him for ages. Sue and I are going to go back to the 8th Avenue Mosque to see if we can find out if there's anything the Imam didn't tell us. We'll let you know what we find out. I'm afraid I haven't learned anything more about the man you're looking for. How much of an effort have you made to get information? This is a house of prayer, not an intelligence gathering operation. I guess the question for us is, is it a place that promotes terrorism? I told you, I made Ahmed leave this mosque as soon as I learned what his intentions were. What is it you expect me to do? Everyone in this country expects you to do a little more than just give nice sounding statements for the press. I wonder where is your passion? Where is your outrage at the people who hide under your banner and do these insidious things? How dare you come in here and lecture to me? One of our co-workers was shot by Ahmed. He lived. But Malik Bazam wasn't so lucky. He's dead because he stood up and took action against the people who murder in the name of his faith. Maybe you don't know where Ekmed is hiding, but I have a feeling somebody in this mosque might. And I believe if you really wanted to, you could find out. Read all about it. Interesting article. Don't keep us in suspense. A highly placed source is reporting that an employee of the Sudanese embassy in Washington may be responsible for making cash deposits to bank accounts traced to known terrorist cells. 
Sound familiar? That sounds like the phony piece of classified information that we made up especially for the office of the Honorable Senator Chuck Lawton. From Agent Sparky's home state of Wisconsin, if I'm not mistaken. The figures, Dairy State took the cheese. The writer, if anyone's interested, is Joe Harding at everyone's favorite Washington paper. I didn't know he'd moved to the Times. He hasn't. Self-proclaimed investigative reporter and backscratcher extraordinaire. I can't say I'm shocked. You know, this is nice work. Just enough hint of scandal to be titillating, but not enough facts to actually pin anything down. Now we know the office that is the source of our leak. And the report at the end of the spigot. Now we just need to pin it down to who in the senator's office is doing the dirty deed. There are 28 in Lawton's office, including the interns and the senator himself. But who's counting? Oh, we don't have the time or the manpower to watch that crowd, so... We watch Joe Harding, the reporter. And we shoot a little more die Senator Lawton's way and see which member of his staff makes a beeline for Mr. Harding. When we find the sorry mongrel who's responsible, well, let's just say I consider what they did to be every bit as bad as pulling the trigger. This just came in from our good friends from WYZX. Channel 3? I wasn't aware we had any good friends there. We didn't, but we do now. They refused to air it, but they thought we might want to see it. Now you see that we will no longer tolerate the provocations of your godless, immoral government. When you attack us, the sons and daughters of Allah will answer fire with fire, sword with sword. We will attack your agents and soldiers and those who aid and abet them with all the strength that we possess. We will take the fight to you. You are no longer safe inside your own borders. Be forewarned. Anybody up for matinee? Why, well, what's playing? Ahmed does DC again. Oh. This is the digitized version of his video. I find it much more interesting. What is it? We only hear church bells. Four chimes. So it's four o'clock somewhere. And since the sun's shining in the window, it's obviously 4 p.m. How did you do that? By sending the audio through a digital sound filter that deletes Ahmed's voice, then amplifies everything else. Ah, now the bells are playing a song. Not just any bells. Ancient Carolyn bells from the Netherlands. There's only one company on the East Coast that imports and designs them, and they said a church called Christ the Savior near Rock Creek is the only one with enough Carolyn bells to play this hymn. So we now know Ahmed made his home movie right here in Washington. I'll bet our Mr. Radical Islam didn't figure on the Rock of Ages for his soundtrack. Okay, we've got the target area. The question is, how far away from the church was Ahmed when he made the tape? Calculating the sound variance between Ahmed's speech and how much I had to amplify the bells in order to hear them, Probably within a mile. I love technology. Then you'll like this too. Let's take a look at what's outside the window. GJ's die. Would anyone like to buy a vowel? A diner? Very good. I wasn't sure anyone would get that. Diner, dive shop. Neon lights went with diner. It's kind of like uh, lip reading. I don't always get everything everyone is saying. So I get used to filling in the blanks. Somebody call Pat Sajak. TJ's Diner. Specialty, crab cake steamed in beer. Tasty. From the angle of the sun coming into the window at 4 p.m., we should be looking for something right along here. I'd bet on the monthly rental apartments. The manager says Akuma checked out last night. I don't suppose he left a forwarding address. No, that's not to say he doesn't have some other little surprises for us. All right, let's check it out. You see anything? Not much. Let me just turn the mag up on this little beauty. Hello. A little welcoming message. A 
The room's wired with IR activated sensors. Get the bomb, boys. Ahmed must have been a very busy bee to get all those sensors and explosives in place so quickly. No rest for the wicked. Hey, anything to kill a few more infidels. Anybody interested in some more show and tell? Yeah. Can you show and tell me where Ahmed is? Well, it's not quite as exciting as that, but this ain't bad. In case you haven't recognized him yet, the man hiding behind a newspaper is our favorite Washington reporter, Joe Harding. Probably reading his own column. And here comes our Mr. Guest. This would be Philip Kent, one of Senator Lawton's top aides. Gee, I wish we could tell what they're saying. Philip Kent gave Harding the phony tip, almost word for word. I'm kind of disappointed. I thought he'd be more original than that. An original thought? Please, he's a politician. Slimy senator, a drongo reporter, and a terrorist who's trying to blow us off the face of the earth. Got more weasels running around here than a Tasmanian hen house. I think you and I ought to pay Mr. Kent a little visit. Better watch what we say. Apparently, he has a hard time keeping a secret. And need I remind you, this is just a different kind of booby trap, boys and girls. Trip this wire and your career blows up in your face. Yes, well, we've established that I'm bulletproof, probably bombproof, too. So, let's go. Uh, Miles, maybe you should stay here. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, no, if, uh, if this little poindexter is responsible for making me a uh, pop-up target for terrorists, I at least want the satisfaction of looking him in his smarmy little face when we take him down. Well, you're absolutely right about that. And I can personally assure you that Senator Lawton is considering your proposal. Fabulous. Well, we'll see you at the benefit then. And, oh, please, say hello to your lovely wife, uh, Helen, for me. Right. Bye-bye. Sorry about that. Lobbyist. Always want a piece of you. I'm Philip Kent, and you folks must be the ones who called from our nation's number one law enforcement agency. Jack Hudson. Sue Thomas. Miles Leland. Hello. What can I do for you folks today? We need to discuss a rather sensitive matter with you. Ah, uh, well, discretion is my middle name. We have reason to believe that classified information is being leaked by this office. That's terrible. Yes, it is. And I should also tell you that leaking such information is a federal offense. It's a nice little exchange program you guys have here. You leak Joe Harding classified info, and then when you need to call in a favor, he writes something nice about your boss. Why don't you tell me exactly how it works? Now, if you don't mind, we'd like to know if this is your deal or if the senator's in on it, too. And I would like to remind you that Senator Lawton has oversight authority on your agency. I don't think he'd like to know that you were intimidating one of his top aides. Oh, he's going to know, because we're going to tell him. Think about it, Philip. If the senator doesn't know anything about this, don't you think it's going to come as a bit of a shock to him? And if he does, who do you think he'll want to take the fall? Himself or some lower level aide? He doesn't know. It may be illegal for an aide to leak classified information, but it's not illegal for a journalist to print it. So the fact that you might have gotten an agent shot... That would be me. ...is irrelevant? I didn't, so yes it is. Check the date on my story. You had already botched your raid by the time I wrote it, so it wasn't compromised by me. Did you discuss what you knew with anyone prior to that? <laughs> I don't have to tell you that. Or anything else that's protected by the First Amendment's language concerning the freedom of the press. It's a fascinating passage. You guys should read it sometime. I've been doing this a long time. I know what information might put people in jeopardy, and I don't do that. If something's given to me off the record, I don't print it, and I don't go talking about it at cocktail parties. Wouldn't be in business long if I did. I know how to do my job. Why don't you guys learn how to do yours, and maybe you won't always have to blame the press for your failures. Mr. Harding, I have... Oh. I'll come back. No, no, it's all right. They were just uh, leaving. Look, I'm on a deadline. If you guys want to continue this conversation, you're going to have to come up with a better reason than the pleasure of your company. <laughs> you can show them out. We'll be in touch, Joe. Well, isn't that something to look forward to?
Ross always this charming? He's intense. We noticed. But he's really a great writer. Oh, well, then perhaps he could write himself a new personality. That was Omar from the 8th Avenue Mosque. The man you're looking for, Ahmad al Adir, has been known to frequent a certain coffee house near the campus where he recruits college students to join his cause. You might get some more information about him there. Do you know the name of it? It's uh, on the southwest edge of campus, by the commons. Can we talk to the people who told you this? Ms. Thomas, I have done as you asked. Please respect the sensitive nature of the position this has put me in. It also seems he was seeing a young woman, an American. I don't suppose you know her name? I have told you all I know. Yeah. Yeah, I know him. Used to come in here, set up shop at the corner table, and never order anything. Not particularly friendly, but uh, he seems to have a lot of conversations with different people. What kind of people? Guys, mostly. Middle Eastern? Uh, they look like that, yeah. You ever see a woman with him? Uh, yeah, he's come in with his one chick quite a bit. Non-fat, decaf, no-whip latte. Never tips. I think she might be his girlfriend or something. Name's uh, Laura, I think. This is Laura person, she's a student? Be my guess. Never thought to ask, but this is a university. That's kind of what we do here. Right. Have you been here lately? Uh, I haven't seen him for a while, but uh, she's been around. Could you uh, give us a description? Uh, blonde, sort of cute. Could even be my type, except she's with him and she doesn't tip. Some people are just cheap. Thank you. Is that a real five? Your initial information yielded a pretty good-sized database, which I managed to narrow down to seven possible matches, but I'm pretty sure you're only going to have to check out one. Wait a minute, we know her. She's the intern. Laura Greenlee works with none other than Joe Harding. What a coincidence, huh? Ahmed just can't walk in the front door most places. So, he goes and gets himself an impressionable little American sweetie. With some rebel against daddy radical views. And a weakness for tall, dark, and dangerous men. And most importantly, a job that puts her in close contact with a known conduit of classified information. Anybody interested in a little search and seizure? She'll do better in prison. Mm -hmm. Not as big a room to keep tidy. See, you're doing her a favor. What are you finding? So far, just a very messy apartment. Well, you better pick up the pace. SOG just called and said that Laura's heading in our direction. This is your 10 minute warning. Okay, pressure's on. Clock winding down, no timeouts remaining. Looks interesting. What do you got? Could be the thing that seals up this nest due to leak. Yes. Oh, I love a buzzer beater. We're out of here. Nice job, boys. Photocopies of what looks to be Joe Harding's personal notes from his meetings with Philip Kent. Now we know she knew. A direct terrorist connection. Wow, good stuff in here. Some things I didn't even know. Yeah. Right. Okay, we're on our way. Change of plans. SOG thought Laura was heading here, but she ended up at a house nearby. They could see through a window that a Middle Eastern man greeted her with a kiss. All units, we're on the move. Turn around! I said! 
of stunt did you think you were trying to pull back whoa, there? Whoa, 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 take it easy. No, I won't take it easy. That was not SOP and you know it. I may very well want to shoot you one day, mate, but if I do, I don't want it to be by accident. Relax, nobody got shot and we got our man, so no harm, no foul. Do you believe that? You were in worse trouble than I thought. Hey, you better get yourself back to the rain. Nice work, everybody. Now that must have felt especially good for you, Miles. Oh, uh... It was a team effort. All the way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Miles? Are you alright? I think so. I'm, uh, I'm just having uh, kind of a, a hard time uh, breathing. Do you want me to get some help? No, I. Uh, that wouldn't uh, be good. I, uh, I think I'm. I think I'm having a panic attack. Take a slow, deep breath. The impact of the last few days has uh, finally caught up to me. I think you should see somebody about this. I'll be fine. I would, however, ask you to keep this strictly between us. I don't want you to agree to that because I don't think it's what's best for you. But, okay, I will. Your life changed last week. I know little about that. Life has a way of taking left turns on us. I also know you're not likely to ever be totally the same. You never run through that door and await again the same way you did before that bullet lodged in your chest plate. But that's okay. Life is a process. You should also never look at a sunset the same way. We live, we experience and go on. How we go on is what we have some participation in. You think bravery is all about going through that door on the next raid. But maybe the real courage comes with admitting you need help and reaching out for it. It means reach out. Reach out, Miles. Excuse me, 
You're not supposed to just walk back here like you own the place. I knew the way, and I happen to know your intern won't be back for at least 25 to 30 years, and that's with time off for good behavior. Look, don't try to make anything out of this. She was merely an intern at this paper. I barely knew her. I certainly have no connection to her. I've already given my statement. There's no need to be so defensive, Mr. Harding. I'm just here to give you an exclusive. The scoop is... You are responsible for the death of a decent, patriotic man who was trying to do the right thing for his country. Your notes got my link that I'm killed. There's a reason it's called classified information, Mr. Harding. Because if it gets leaked to anybody, bad things can happen. I never told anyone. You didn't have to. An intern copied your notes and gave them to a terrorist. And a friend of mine was murdered because of it. No matter how many times I read the First Amendment to the Constitution, it won't bring him back. I'm sorry. Tell that to my leaked mother. Actions have consequences, Mr. Harding. Leland, I, uh, I have an appointment. 